This is the Sunday when we recognize the baptism of our Lord, the first Sunday after Epiphany. Epiphany being that season in the church year when Jesus is revealed to us as God's Son. Today is also one of those days when I get to tell an absolutely horrid joke, <laughs> but one that I will tell again because it's a favorite of mine. Today in our first lesson, we have the initial reference to baseball in Scripture. For we read that in the big inning, <laughs> God created the heavens and the earth. But in the beginning, we focus on the world coming into existence. Now, Scripture actually presents a number of different perspectives on how this happened. The book of Hebrews talks about how God created everything out of nothing. Genesis paints a couple of different pictures. We get one of them this morning. And to appreciate Genesis chapter 1, I like to explain it in terms of a marching band. Now, we've had a number of football games this, so far this weekend. We've got a few more coming up. The NCAA championship game is tomorrow night. And so the fans, or the fans will be treated to these marching bands. One of them from Ohio State. Now you can take a group of 300 students with instruments and put them out on the field and they just kind of be walking around, bumping into each other dropping their instruments, making all kinds of raucous noise. Hardly entertaining. But with practice, and at the command of the person in charge, these kids line up, and they march out onto the field with precision. And the reason I'm looking forward to it tomorrow night is because the Ohio State Band always marches out and forms the word Ohio with their band members. Structured, organized, everything in place, everything the way it's supposed to be. And it's considered a great honor to be that one band member who gets to dot the I in the word Ohio. In the same way, we have an image in scripture of the world in chaos. God speaks and that chaos organizes. And throughout the chapter, and we're only going to hear a couple of verses this morning, with each interval of creation, God looks at what was created and pronounces it good. Not good as in well done. God doesn't need to compliment himself. But good as in, yeah, this is what I had in mind. If you would imagine a sculptor with a block of granite, and later on that block of granite becomes a statue. Michelangelo was once asked how he was able to sculpt that beautiful statue of David. And he said, I started with a block of granite, and I chipped away everything that wasn't David. <laughs> <laughs> because he had a picture in his mind of what it was going to be like when the chipping was done. From the book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Here is our first lesson. We've got a little sprinkle of rain outside this morning. 
but I'm sure all of you at one time or another has been in a thunderstorm with dark clouds, intense wind, and driving rain. I know when I lived in the Midwest and on the East Coast, thunderstorms could be incredibly powerful, with thunder that actually shook the house, and lightning so intense you could smell the electricity in the air. Psalm 29 paints such a picture for us. The nation of Israel on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Ocean is experiencing such a storm so great that the cedars, the cedar trees in Lebanon, must yield to the wind. Let's turn to page 228 in the front of the hymnals, and let's read Psalm 29 in unison. Page 228, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. In our second lesson, Luke records for us that Paul the missionary is in Ephesus, a city in western Turkey. And there he discovers that there is a small Christian congregation. He asks them if they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they respond, huh? What's a Holy Spirit? We never heard anything like that. And so he asks, well, when you were baptized, what kind of a baptism did you have? They replied, the baptism of John. And so Paul deals with that situation. These Christians are blessed with God's Spirit's presence with remarkable results. From the book of Acts, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophecy, altogether about twelve of them. Here ends the second lesson. In our gospel, we have a strong epiphany theme. You can't get much better confirmation than a voice from God. You know, every now and then, people ask me to write a letter of recommendation for them, be it for a scholarship or a job position. 
And I always begin my letter by saying, I know you are expecting that because this letter comes from a minister, you're going to hear nothing but nice things. I want you to understand that I wouldn't say them if I didn't believe them to be true. And so we trade a little bit on my credibility as a clergyman, as somebody who wouldn't lie, as somebody who would speak the truth. So if you were ever in trouble and needed someone to stick up for you, with the exception maybe of Santiago, I'd be happy, no, I'm just kidding. I'd be happy to come and speak up on your behalf. We call that being a character witness. And yes, I would be happy to be a character witness for you at any time. I just say that because you get in trouble more than anybody else I know. I'm just getting there too. I like teasing you. But you know I'm just teasing. I mean, after all, that's what we do to our brothers, right? We tease and torment our brothers and sisters. Anyhow, Jesus comes to John to be baptized. John declines, recognizing who Jesus is. Jesus insists, not because he has sinned and is in need of repentance, but because of his willingness to submit himself to God's will and to be the rescuer, the Messiah that God had called him to be. We rise to the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be seated and we'll sing hymn number 439. 